I hope that um, they will come on. Oh, here we go. Hello, Nancy. Hi, I'm in the car. <laughs> I'm trying not to look. I only have three blocks to go. There's nothing to see. There's nothing to see. Do, the boys, do all the other boys know to get on? I don't know. Okay, text again. Um, don't ever try to ship something internationally. They wanted $100 to ship a small package that had two books in it to the UK. I'm like, fuck you, no. <laughs> I'm not sure. So I called my husband. He's like, babe, it's always been that way. I don't give a fuck. Why are you doing that? He goes, I'm sorry. I'm not being very sympathetic. <laughs> but I'm like, no, you're not. These are your great nieces and nephews, not mine. Well, they are mine, but. I got you. But if I'd known that, I would have ordered the books to be shipped to them. What's up? Hey, buddy. You guys not have jobs or something? You just doing stuff all the time, man. That's it. We have no jobs. Oh, my God. <laughs> we really did do that. <laughs> Oh, Since March 13th, our industry has been shut down. In <laughs> well, and not to mention, um, did you, Andy, did you see, so Steve just sent a second email. Steve? Who's Steve? Elmendorf, do you get the subject matter emails? Sometimes. Usually you guys forward them to me. I didn't get anything from him. Okay. Um, as soon as I walk in the door. So two things. The first one that I tried to read to Shereen Sharon, um, <laughs> though we Shereen. have decided, wait, but here's what's so funny. He actually knows how to say her name because I don't quite understand how the South Asian and the Persian are the same thing, but apparently they are. Um, so there's some Republican who wants to do something in this bill that would make it impossible for the Biden administration to do something. So they put it on hold. And what I noticed when I looked real quickly at a red light, um, that they're passing another continuing resolution. I just couldn't tell whether or not it's till Monday or is it until next Friday. But this crap's got to stop. This is nuts. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what's the goal for today? I'm assuming we do, like, we will be thankful, I guess, and everything like that. But I do still think we should we should make very clear that the SOS Act does not cover significant portions of our industry. Right. So right. what what we did hear from was that you, Sharon, that said the PPP. Who had that? Was it was it uh, Bill that sent a message saying that the PP they reached something for the PPP this morning? Something with the PPP, but the SOS probably wasn't going to have much in it. Where did I have that conversation? No, it was the restaurants that were going to kind of not, I don't know. I have so many emails and messages today. No, it, but I think, I think I think if we stick to task, like Andy said, mm -hmm. that the SOS is does not cover our industry. And also what I challenged Senator Blumenthal when we did the SCORE small business call was that Yes, the PPP is great for some, but for many, um, we can't. And they said it in the hearing too that that that, that we don't even have we don't have work. We can't give our employees work, um, so we need money to be able to keep the doors open. And I, I really like what Michael. I think it was Michael Strickland that said, and I, we all say it: no business is designed to to operate without money for eighteen months or twelve months or nine months. Correct. And that's what we're we're in. And and again, yeah. no fault of our own. Um, but I think the the thing that we want to do today is say is say we didn't hear about the event industry, and it was you know we understand that these talks often are focused, but the live events is a lot more than just the concerts and Garth Brooks shows. Yeah, make sure that you mention what it is. You know, like, uh, make sure you mention, like, you know, we're looking at corporate events, you're looking at trade shows, conferences, you know, weddings, some big words so that he can maybe wrap his head around, like, what we do do, if that makes sense. He, there's a video, he know he knows, and there's a video. Okay. Uh, he, there's a video of him, and I, we're, we're already recording, by the way, but um, there's a video. Maybe of We can edit that, but why don't we yeah. ask him this? So we really appreciate the, the hearing the other day. It really was helpful. Can you clarify for us where 
where you see the entire industry of live events fitting in that discussion, because it was very much focused on the concert industry, which is a portion of what we do, but it is, it does not cover it. it I don't even think it covers a third of what we do would be my guess. Um, maybe, but maybe not. Um, so I think that maybe this is getting him to say back to us. We understand that was a limited conversation. We want to assure you that we heard that your industry, because I'm curious as to almost, what did you get out of it, Senator? What, what did you learn in that hearing that helped you better understand and that's the plight? You need I'm going to let you guys drive, but if anything's well, missed, I'll chime in. And I think Dwayne's joining too, right? Andy, you're the host, but are you able to? I don't think you're able to stay the whole time, right? Oh, wait. Yeah, oh. maybe I'm not. How, how long is I, this? Not longer than an hour, five to six or less. Okay, I don't yeah, even I think. I don't even think. I don't think I'll, I'll make, I'll make you the host. That's fine. It's fine. Um, so just don't it? click Don't click the start webinar, obviously, until we're ready. Well, I did that mistake when Nancy told me to one time. Yeah, it was my fault. I own it. <laughs> it only cost us, you know, one critical person for our team, but, you know, okay. Nancy, you're too hard on yourself. Well, you know. All right, I'll be right back. I, I'm, I'm Jewish. That's what happens. Okay. Wow. It is really cold out there. Yeah. But you all have snow on the ground, right? A ton. Yeah, we don't have any. So it's just what I call naked trees and cold, which to me is not worth it. Um, so I, I guess that's kind of, and maybe what we do is. Nancy, you, that's it. You have it on the ball. And then, you know, I think just points to reiterate is that SOS is not for us, you know, it doesn't encompass us enough. And that, you know, I challenged, I said, I, 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 I said the PPP is good for some. But for a lot of us, the PPP, we don't have payroll. We need help with insurance, rent, all this other stuff. Um, yes. And so I think that what we do is... And not be put on that. No, because you are, he is your senator. What I would like to propose is, is that you welcome him, you thank yeah. him as a Connecticut, -y, all of those things. And... Um, you know, thank him for the hearing. And I would like to introduce you to Nancy Schaefer, who is, because otherwise I come across as, who are you, lady? Yeah. And, um, you're, and you're the president of the, right? That's your official title? So apparently my official title The is, Empress. Yes. My official title is... Um, What is my official title? Oh, chair. But the senator has not arrived yet, but that's okay. Yep. He's, uh... Well, it looks like Alan figured out how to get in. We're so glad you're here, Alan. <laughs> See, Nassie? Um, so just take a peek at that, um, Dwayne, and I'll explain to you after. Um, about my conversation, or I'm going to have a conversation with Stephanie on Monday, I think. A peek at which? That email that I just sent you, which basically talks about worker needs. Um, what, gotcha. what she, I asked her to send me points. Um, and I think that in the email, the, the one through five probably helps. Ron, make sure to say the call's being recorded when we start, too. Yes. Oh, we're already recording. Even though it's already recording. <laughs> call's being recorded. And then um, any questions, whoever, if you hear us now, uh, please, we're going to use the Q&A for questions. Um, and we're waiting for the senator. We're early still. First of all, thank you, everybody, for jumping on this so quickly. Um, things moved very fast today. Um, we're tickled to death. Um, I'm delighted that Sharon was able to make this happen. 
Um, again, oh, Stephanie's there. Hi, Stephanie. Um, the thing that's important to think about for those of us out there um, is that this is exactly what we talked about yesterday is the door has started to open in a way that we are all being heard and seen in a different way that maybe we did before the hearing. So um, I'm very pleased with where all of this is going and the fact that the Senator very much wants to meet with us. I want to give a, I want to say a very big thank you to Roshalela, who's uh, an attendee who's on the Connecticut board and uh, really was the person that was in connection with uh, Senator Blumenthal to arrange this today. She was worked tirelessly to coordinate today. Rose, thank you. Ro. Ro. Um, hi, Robin. Yes, we need to connect. I feel like I'm screaming at people through this. It appears Stephanie Thomas is on the call, Alan. If you go over to where it says participants on the bottom of your screen and you click that. They might not be able to see each other. Mm, I think they can if they hit attendees. Okay. And then you should be able to scroll through it. But we know how technical I am, everybody, so I could be wrong. But I've always been able to do that. Yep, it's on. Okay. Hi, Bonnie. I hope you're feeling better. We are waiting for the elected official. Um, so just to give you guys an update while we are awaiting Senator Blumenthal's arrival. Um, they have extended, um, oh, yay, Bonnie is standing. I hope you just are leaning on something. Um, um, the they have passed another CR. I believe we spoke about this yesterday. Um, I've just received notification from subject matter that the CR, thus the continuing resolution, has been passed to fund the federal government through Sunday. Uh, Senator. Hello, Senator. Senator, thank you so much for joining you? us today. Uh, last minute and taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, you know, in Connecticut, we always appreciate your support. Um, welcome today. Um, I know we. You, this is so last minute for you, um, so I want to let you know who's on this panel. Um, um, we have Nancy Schaefer, who's the president of the National Live Events Coalition, Andrew Klosterman, uh, board member, director of operations of the National Live Events Coalition, and Dwayne Thomas, who's uh, who leads the government affairs committee for the National Live Events Coalition. And you know, I think Ro is on, although we can't see her. Rose on, yes, and uh, on other board members from the Connecticut. We just wanted to keep things as, as slim and concise for you to not take up too much of your time. Um, okay. So much appreciate uh, what you're doing for us. So I'm going to hand it off uh, to Nancy. Okay. First of all, Senator, thank you so very much, A, for making time for us. Um, and you are basically, there are people on this call from across the country, which makes me very, very happy. Um, the Live Events Coalition, as I know you have heard, is a new organization that took root in, in COVID. And we want to thank you for all that you've done to try and help us get relief. Um, I think that what we wanted to know was from the, um, the hearing on when, Wednesday, Tuesday, my days run together and I'm sure yours do, Senator. Um, did you get any different perspective of what our industry is, even though the panelists and those that were testifying really had a, a certain vertical of our industry, which is that kind of of the concert industry? Um, what I guess we're curious as to what you learned from our colleagues and how we can help fill in any questions that you might have. 
Uh, I think I knew a lot about uh, your industry as well as about the kinds of venues that were directly represented there. I had the head of the Bushnell come down, David Fay. Uh, the Bushnell, as you may know, is one of our major live theaters in Connecticut. But I think what I saw was the similarity of the entertainment venues and the events industry in essentially having to plan many, many months in advance, as you do, uh, make investments, substantial investments, through contracts, outside contractors, as well as employees, and the need for a robust PPP program, but also something that would, in effect, meet the particular needs of your industry and others like it. I think that came across very graphically to my colleagues as well. And what was good about the hearing was that um, there was someone from uh, representing the, the bus, transportation sector, the talent sector, the um, uh, Nashville music sector, and I think building bipartisan support was tremendously important. And if you notice, uh, there was bipartisan support. Uh, so I think that's another factor that was important in the hearing. And I think now we're literally in, you know, we're sort of on the five yard line here with a pandemic relief bill that is only a down payment. It's a kind of life raft for the next couple of months. It's not much longer than a few months uh, until we have an administration uh, with Joe Biden who will be committed to a much more robust package targeting small businesses and uh, live performance venues and special events and you know the whole gamut of companies that do this kind of thing. Generically, it's people who do events. You know, they can be concerts, they can be bar mitzvahs, they can be weddings, they can be corporate uh, special events. And I have visited, um, for example, Bridgeport, uh, Mr. Nicholson's wonderful place uh, where we had a round table, informal round table. I visited a number of times uh, there. Uh, and often drive by it and marvel at the murals, uh, which I can see from the outside. Um, but, um, you know, I, I think um, that it's very important for the public to understand. Because I'll begin, uh, and I'll just finish with this thought. I will sometimes begin explaining your plight. People say, oh yeah, restaurants. And I will say, no, it's not restaurants, you know. Restaurants, you can come home at five o'clock and say, you know, let's go out to dinner. And the restaurant is ready to serve you. You can't do that with a wedding, um, you know, with a corporate event. People understand that once you begin to, oh yeah, those people. You know? <laughs> those people. So I think it's, um, I just think it's important that my colleagues understand. And I'm hopeful that this bill will include some relief that's meaningful to your industry. And we so appreciate that. I think that the, the, the other side of this, which is really important to us because of the, the different verticals in the industry of live events is, is that while yes, we are made up primarily of small businesses, it's just the nature of the beast that we also have this amazing workforce, which is a 1099 gig and kind of W2 hybrid 1099. And we have so much concern about sustaining that workforce who unfortunately didn't benefit nor will they benefit from PPP in that respect. Um, and 
we know that in this new bill, there is an extension of unemployment and I believe there is a bump. I'm not sure if there's a decision on what that bump is going to look like, um, but it, it's also about our need as an industry for the PPP to process somewhat differently than it initially did. In the first round, I think you've, you've heard, we all applied, we did it, we brought employees back and we had nothing for them to do. So um, it is wonderfully comforting that you truly understand this um, and that now your colleagues understand that while the panelists and those who testified are part of us, because what we say about live events is this. Somebody says, well, what's a live event? And my response usually is, if you buy a ticket, you're given a ticket, you're invited, or your boss tells you you have to go. That tends to be a live event. And um, so it's this massive ecosystem that is somewhat hard to understand. And while the restaurants, as you know, have their own set of issues and we consider them close cousins, um, it's, it is different. Um, because we are so unique, do you have any information or insight about how this Band-Aid bill um, that we're gonna have until the new administration comes in um, will address our needs? Because for us, I, I would like our workforce to be able to find support, but as small businesses to bring them back if we have no business to turn around and let them go again creates a cycle. And so I'm, I'm curious if you have any insight into that. Well, uh, it will include essentially the Save Our Stages bill. Uh, it will include more PPP, but targeted at smaller businesses. So it looks like businesses with less than $300. It will target businesses that have suffered revenue losses like yours. It will not be the kind of shovel the money out, forgive me for putting it that way, that crassly, but you know, I know law firms that were doing just as well this year as they did last year. They applied for PPP and they got a ton of money and they kept all their employees because they were doing so well. You know, it was very well intentioned, but it was also, you know, it had some flaws. So we've tried to learn from those flaws make the forgiveness process more flexible. You know, I'm still hearing, or especially now hearing stories about companies that have sought forgiveness of the loans to turn them into grants and they're having problems and we're trying to help them, but make, make more flexible what the money can be used for. So you don't bring back em employees for them to just sit around. That makes no sense. Um, I'm hoping that it will help your industry because of the flexibility. And again, I just wanna stress my, the, the major hope that I have is we're gonna see a really robust bill uh, that will extend and enlarge, save our stages um, and um, PPP and unemployment um, insurance for the gig um, you know, this is really important. You understand, your industry, you understand more than others that this uh, pandemic unemployment insurance, PUE, really helped a lot of people that normally wouldn't be regarded as unemployed, you know, because they're working at one event, then they go to another event, then, or they're part time, or uh, for any number of other reasons they would not have qualified before. And this unemployment insurance was very important for them. And we need to extend it. Um, so I think, I, I thank you for that. Um, we have a lot of people and there are some questions, but what I'm gonna do now, um, Dwayne, who leads our government um, affairs committee and works very closely with um, our team and understands the bills at a different level, full disclosure than I do. Um, I'd like to turn it over to him, but again, first of all, thank you for taking time from your Friday evening, um, and thank you for what you have done, and I believe you're going to continue to do 
for our industry. It is greatly appreciated. Well, as as I, I have no idea who's on this call because all I can see is um, yes, yeah. one, two, three, four, well, four of you, one of me. Uh, but I understand from you, there are a lot of others. So thank you all, whoever you are on this call. But uh, if you're from Connecticut, you know that uh, I have been a frequent guest uh, and, um, and beneficiary of your insight and advice. I intend for that to continue as we go into the new year. And so I really welcome any questions or comments and just don't, don't feel you are imposing ever, but particularly not this evening, because I guarantee I'm going to be working late into the evening. <laughs> uh, late into the evening. I'm in my office right now, as you can see. Uh, and uh, probably uh, just about the whole weekend, too. So, are you in Connecticut is, or are you in D.C.? Oh, I'm in D.C. I'm in my oh. office in, uh, in the Hart Building. Others, but you and I may not know this, but I live on Capitol Hill. And for all of that, you know, in the Capitol building, there's a light at the very, yeah. very top. If that light is on, they are in there working. So I always know when our elected officials are working because I just have to drive down the street here and go, oh, look, they're working. So while right now, we are happy that the light is on because it means that we're going to get closer to this relief package. And I prefer it when it's not on on the weekends because then it means that you guys have done what you need to do and can go to work. Um, well, we Nancy, I want to tell you what, uh, before I had this job, I was the state attorney general. And before that, I was in the state legislature, the Connecticut state legislature. I was state senator. And uh, Mark Twain has a famous quote. My friends from Connecticut have probably heard it before that no man's life or property is safe as long as the Connecticut legislature is in session. <laughs> so, um, and uh, you could say the same thing about Congress, uh, but often our work, a lot of our work is done when that light is not on because that only indicates that people, that the floor of the Senate is open, that they're- a vote, just, right? That, they're, that we are voting or that people are speaking and right now we are meeting off the floor. We're meeting in our offices and elsewhere doing negotiating and hopefully coming to a resolution. Wonderful. Um, Dwayne, do you want to address some of these questions that are popping up at a very rapid pace? I think many of them are similar, but. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And thank you, Senator, uh, for your time. I know that you've got a long weekend ahead of you trying to get to midnight on, on Sunday. Um, probably a, a tall order yet. Um, but I wanted to just take a second to thank you for not only your uh, service to the citizens of Connecticut, to, but to Americans in whole. Um, we really do, again, to uh, echo Nancy, we appreciate your time spent in the subcommittee meeting on Tuesday as well uh, regarding this industry of ours. Um, and one last thank you. We appreciate your part in pushing the second draw PPP to the finish line. We see that we're right there. Um, this is, as you said, a much needed respite for our struggling small businesses, even if it's brief. Um, it couldn't come at a better time. Um, and we, want, we also want to make sure that there is inclusion of all three of the tenants of unemployment aid in the relief bill, uh, including PE, PEUC, uh, so that our furloughed workers can have a bridge until we can reopen. Uh, PUA, because so many of our industry's professionals are, as you said, independent contractors or small business owners. And of course, the FPUC is also very helpful. Uh, everybody knows it's critical for us to be able to make our ends meet, uh, not only in keeping our businesses open, but, but being able to keep our homes and keep food on the table. Um, as we head down the home stretch of the 116th Congress, and we begin to look into January and beyond, and you already alluded to this, uh, we want you to be aware of the state of our entire industry beyond just performing art portion. And we see that, that you are and your colleagues are beginning to become so as well. Um, we, we especially want to make sure that this is front and center as the discussions for the, the recovery part of this whole endeavor uh, start to happen and looking at January and February and beyond. Um, and, and just really take a minute to, to take in the very width of our industry as a whole beyond performing arts and, and into the corporate events and the fundraisers and political events, the festivals and fairs, some of which are, are once a year things. And so these folks have lost 
a hundred percent of their revenue for the year because they only had one shot at it. Um, and it, it is a very hard industry to wrap your arms around all at once. And, and we, we know that, but do know that many of us, even a business like mine, a small lighting production company, uh, will embrace any one of those verticals in a given week. We can go from a wedding and a, or a bar mitzvah to a large corporate conference, to a fun run, to a concert, uh, all in the space of a few days. So it is a rather um, hard to grasp ecosystem, but it's an ecosystem nonetheless. And our, our workers are as critical as the business owners and we wanna make sure that all of them can float. Um, as you look at recovery, I wanna make it just a quick plug. And I know that you're a supporter of this, uh, but the Restart Act does seem to us like it has the bones and the framework of something that could work very well, especially if we view this as a proportional thing where the hardest hit businesses are the most aided. Uh, the lesser hit businesses still have help, but we, we know that this has to come in on budget and we think that there are things that could be tweaked about Restart that might be a great start and we hope that we can be a part of that conversation. You know, even though we're struggling right now, we're a scrappy lot. Um, we do plan on surviving this with help from Congress and we, we, we know that we can bring back the 9 million jobs that our industry has already lost. We wanna bring those jobs back into the economy and we wanna prevent as many bankruptcies for our mostly small businesses as we possibly can. And that's why we're talking to you today and we, we do appreciate and see that you are uh, someone who has our back and uh, we would encourage you to reach out to Sharon through the Connecticut part of the coalition at any time. If there's something that we could be doing differently to advocate for ourselves and for our industry. If there's a part of our story that still needs to be told, um, we, we hope that you you know that you have a conduit to, to ask those questions and, and let us know how we can help. Um, well, I, I appreciate those points and I am a strong advocate of the Restart Act. I think it should be made more expansive and flexible. Uh, I also think the same is true of PPP so that it fits some of the businesses that may be different from the, you know, the small business that, um, you know, for 10 years has had 15 employees and all they produce is X widget parts. And, you know, it's the same every year. Um, yours is a different business model because it isn't the sort of stayed, um, you know, widget manufacturing model. So I, I do understand that point. And I do think, uh, you know, I'm a strong supporter of a bill called the uh, Lifeline, I'm going by memory, Small Business Lifeline Act, I think it is, that uh, would be even more flexible than Restart. And that may not be possible to accomplish in this smaller bill, but I'd like to work with you on January and February. Wonderful. Well, we, we would look forward to that. Um, Nancy, do you have some questions that you might want um, to drop out there? I think the Senator may be able to shed well, some. A lot of I haven't been able to read them, but I've seen that there are questions. All right. Let's see what we can find. You know, so um, if I can chime in, I mean, one of the things when we had the score roundtable that I, you know, I didn't hear talk, talk about was that, you know, for a lot of us, the EIDL is kind of our lifeline. Um, the PPP for me, for example, didn't work at all. I really would, would love it if government also realized that we've been, had no choice but to take on additional debt at a, at a higher interest rate than we can get in a private loan. Um, and, and, you know, I, I would love to, to have that as a, as a point that's recognized. Yeah. Now, that's what I, I what, that's a good point. Also, yeah. uh, the requirement of deducting um, an uh, idle advance from the PPP forgiveness amendment. Are those things that are being discussed? Yeah. Or would those be part of the larger recovery bill and not this coming relief bill? For everything that I'm talking about, the sooner the better. So I'm I'm pushing to include it in this bill, but if not, you know, the next one. You know, I, I will just be very blunt to everyone on this call. We've had to give up a lot. Yep. Um, we've had to give up a lot and the classic saying, you know, we can't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. In this bill, there's not only aid for small business, but there's aid for vaccine distribution. 
States need money to distribute the vaccine. Hospitals need money to put it in people's arms. Uh, schools need money to enable kids to come back to their classroom. People are in food lines at the food banks uh, in Connecticut. I've seen the lines, literally lines long, miles long lines of at Rensselaer Field, for example. Uh, the day before Thanksgiving, I was out there and the handing out groceries and people who had never before asked for anything of anyone else were opening the, the trunks of their trunks of their cars so you know you could toss in um, rice and potatoes and you know um, a frozen turkey um, you know it's just heartbreaking and people are out of work so we do need more uh, unemployment insurance so um, you know this something needs to be done here. And therefore, we're not gonna do everything that we would like, but we are gonna have other opportunities. As we work through the next couple of days, now that there's a continuing resolution, does it seem like uh, the unemployment uh, concerns are gonna get, get into the bill? Yes, I think they will. That's, That's terrific. That's great. Um, if I can ask a question real quick, Nancy, because um, I, I can't say the whole time, unfortunately. And thank you, Senator, very much for being here today. Um, it means a lot to us. Um, I, I think, and, and maybe this is addressing some of the questions that are, I've already seen, but um, what we're kind of seeing is, you know, our, our organization did not exist pre-pandemic. We didn't have relationships with, with uh, senators and congressmen and even on the state level as well, uh, like, like uh, industries like the restaurant industry, the hotel industry, that sort of thing. And so um, from, from our angle, we're kind of seeing this, uh, you know, a, a bill like Restart really helping out because it's a broad approach and it addresses the folks that are most impacted by the pandemic. But what seems to also have traction, which we are all kind of surprised by, uh, is that you have verticals like the restaurants and the SOS Act and everything like that, which is, are great bills. Um, but we're wondering, and, and I'm wondering, I guess, in your opinion, what an industry like ours, who is currently not uh, addressed in bills like that should do to move forward with our cause. Um, and maybe it's obviously too late for the current bill, but but in the recovery process, uh, what you would recommend for us to, to get that sort of recognition that we're seeing in other industries? Um, what you should do is essentially what you are doing. Um, and folks from Connecticut who met with me before know that I've consistently advocated for them to reach out to their colleagues in other states, particularly states that have Republican representatives in Congress or the Senate to make the same case. Because I'm talking to them, but I will tell you uh, a lot more persuasive to them than me is people who vote for them. Mm -hmm. They're constituents. I'm just telling you something you already know. And uh, so I am guessing just because I don't know whether that's a light or a window in back of you. Um, right. window. That's window. Yeah. Is that a window? <laughs> so you're someplace out west. Is that right? Colorado. Colorado. Okay, there you go. I'm just guessing because of the time difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, you're... Uh, Mike Bennett is strongly on board. I'm not so sure yep. about Cory Gardner. Of course, Cory Gardner is going to be replaced by John Hickenlooper, who will be hopefully on our side in the next packet. Yeah, and uh, but, Gardner, Gardner we convinced to be a signer on Restart as well. Good. So uh, all I'm saying is it's great that you have this coalition. And uh, equally important is to reach out to the hospitality sector, to reach out to the restaurant groups. You're all in this together. You really are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, because the, we, we ought to try to make it as expansive as possible. We're going to get the, all of these industries going again. They all have to, you know, come back. You can't have a successful hotel when it tells guests well, you know, there are no restaurants around here. Yeah, you just arrived, it's 10 in the evening or, you know, seven in the evening. Yeah, we don't have any restaurants in this town. 
okay, they're not coming back, right? And they're not staying. Uh, they'll go someplace else. Uh, I mean, that's not a, a great analogy, but you, I think you get what I'm saying. Yeah, that, yeah. Like if, if there's no trade show or conference or, or there's no yeah. you know, business or wedding, where there we, there's no yeah. reason to have someone stay in the hotel or go to a restaurant in the first exactly. place. So. Exactly. We you are know. definitely an extended ecosystem that impacts one another for sure. We are um, definitely separate, as you said in your initial comments. Um, we, it's not as easy to have a thousand people come back into a room together versus six people going to a restaurant. Um, yeah. But it does not mean that we should not all be standing together to advocate on behalf of our what I would consider overall ecosystem. Um, the questions that um, seem to be coming up the most, there are two. We have, I, I can tell from these questions that we have a lot of those 1099 gig workers on this call. Um, and they are very concerned and justifiably that Restart is focused on small businesses. And you know, it's the chicken and the egg. If I, as a small business, can get back up and running, then I can hire you. But there is going to be a delay in between there. And our gig workers, many, most, are highly skilled individuals who've been in the industry for a ridiculously long time and make very good incomes, are not able to survive right now. One of the questions is about retroactive PU. E, I think you called it, or P-U-A. There are so many, e. different, so many different acronyms. E. So they're curious as to whether or not it will be retroactive. Um, and then the other part to that question is, if in fact it is, how quickly will that go into a place? Because first of all, many, it's expired already. We know that it's only going till December 31st. For many of our people, it's already gone and they're kind of at a loss. I mean, you know this, there's a, there are millions and millions and millions of unemployed people and our gig workers and our, our W-2s are absolutely those um, people. I'm being corrected. Retroactive S-P-U-C. What is F-P-U-C? Federal Pandemic unemployment compensation. I think it's the, Stephanie, yeah. just said it's the $600 that was on top. And I know that there's something that will go on top. I don't know if it's at the $600 rate. That That's a good question. I don't think it will be at $600. I think it's more <clears throat> likely around $300. And the reason is that a lot of businesses complain to my Republican colleagues, you know, people would rather stay home than come to work, which uh, you know, there are always a handful of people who would rather stay home and come to work, but I have yet to meet them in right. Connecticut. You know, <laughs> people want to come to work. They like to get out of their home. They want to be with their co-workers. I tell this to businesses and then I look at them and I say, so how many of your workers are staying home rather than coming to work? Well, not our people, but we hear about it. You know, it's one of these things, uh, I don't know what to compare it to, but suffice it to say, they have convinced themselves or, you know, the chambers of commerce can, uh, or, or someone has convinced them. Anyway, it won't, because of the money, as well as because of what I've just said, it won't be $600. I believe, I don't hold me to this, but... Uh, because it's gone back and forth, I believe some parts of it will be retroactive. Great. You know, I, I think that the part for us when we hear that, and I know that you understand that, um, very few of us in this industry would, even with the FPUC and the $600, that that was more than what our daily, you know, our, our monthly salary was. Um, there's a misconception about the workforce in our industry, I believe, in terms of the, um, the skill set, not to mention the amount of salary that these people make. And I don't know how we can get 
those who don't believe that to understand that's not who we are. And ours has an additional challenge in that, the, as they said in the committee hearing, we've got a, a, a ramp up and that ramp up's at least six months, if not longer, the vaccine has to be in place. We have to have a consumer confidence. You know, it's, it's every state has a different reopening policy and so on. Um, so it's, I can, I can assure you that for all of those in this industry and on this call, whenever they hear that they don't want to go back to work because they're making more money, become beyond offended um, and angry, justifiably so. So I think it's, it's wonderful to hear that there is some acknowledgement of that. Um, and the, the next person, um, the, the next question really has to do if, and I believe we know the answer to this, and that is if you had been received PPP before or an EIDL loan before, you will be able to reapply. Correct. And do you know whether or not the rules for using said PPP will be the same across the board or will our industry, which has a set of unique needs, be different? Uh, I, as I mentioned at the outset, um, we're trying to give this program additional flexibility. So I don't know exactly how you would want it to be different for your industry, but I'm hopeful that there will be enough flexibility that the SBA and the Lending Institute, remember the PPV program depends on the lending institutions making the loans and the SBA approving the loans and then forgiveness. And I hope we're pushing them in the right direction. Uh, I think part of the good news here is that the SBA, by the time this program, you know, um, is underway at some point, we'll have a new SBA director, new leadership at the SBA and hopefully more sympathetic and more proactive and aggressive in this program. Gentlemen, do you have, I think, I'm looking at all the questions. There's a lot of questions and comments. But the questions are, are pretty much. I can't read them, so. Uh, I, they're going, they're, I'm looking at them. They're, they're pretty much in those two buckets. There is one here that says, will contract labor be included in PPP instead of just our furloughed employees? That's the idea. Great, okay, wonderful. Um, you know, I wanna let everybody know that uh, Senator Blumenthal is, is such an incredible person. Um, I don't know, I think he's cloned and that there's four of him because he's come and spoken with us in Connecticut many times. And he, he's, he's on the phone. You wouldn't expect him to call you back and he's calling back and answering texts. And, you know, I don't know how many senators get on calls like this all the time in last minute. And I, I really have to say how appreciative we all are nationally, not just in Connecticut, that on today, Friday, when you've been dealing with so much, that you took the time to be here with us. Um, I just want to say it, say it again and again and again, and how you know you've expressed in person and and hear how supportive you are of our and understanding of our of our industry. So I just no, I appreciate that. Thank you. Let me just say, you know, I I haven't seen the comments, uh, but I am guessing that some of them express a high degree of frustration. Uh, I really want to thank you. Uh, I want to thank you for your comment uh, just now. Uh, and believe me, I have really come to, let me say, value as friends. The folks uh, on this call from Connecticut, I've spent a fair amount of time with you and I have come to know more about what you do and how you help people and your loyalty to your employees and you know the folks who work with you, uh, which I really respect because not everyone in in the business world or the political world or any other world is like that. But I will say, uh, if you think you're frustrated, 
uh, although I may appear happy and, uh, and uh, smiling, uh, believe me, my frustration is no less than yours. I don't have skin in the same game, but I have spent a lot of skin in this game, the Senate game, trying to convince colleagues to do more, do it better. Um, and, I, you know, I am more than happy to, to hear even the frustration, believe me, uh, it's part of what I do and it inspires me to do more and do better. But um, please know that there are some of us who are advocates for you and we share your frustration from time to time with how government fails to understand, fails to understand uh, what is different about your industry and what is different about some of you from others in the industry, you know, corporate events versus bar mitzvahs, you know, weddings versus, um, you know, maybe, um, um, you know, as you said, um, um, races or whatever, you know, there's, there are special events, there are different events. And I think we need to help all of you because this pandemic has taken such a toll. It's a human toll and financial toll, frustration. You know, I've talked with many of you about your, your worries about the future and you poured your lives and hearts and souls and families into these businesses. And for me, it's been heartbreaking, uh, just as it has been to see 600 restaurants go under in Connecticut. You know, I, I think that, that when you said it's okay to share with you the really angry ones, um, I'm going to paraphrase what angry is. Okay, what angry is, and it is very hard, and I get it, what angry is, is when you're sitting there trying to figure out how you're not going to get evicted or pay the light bill, and you're looking at representatives, and we have good ones, and maybe we have some not so good ones, or ones that are not as compassionate. It's really hard when we know, in some respects, our tax dollars pay your salaries, and right now, we are in, and I say we, because there's a range of people that are fighting evictions that many states, depending on where they are, are not following the eviction moratorium, that they can't get support. People that are on food stamps that never in their wildest dreams would be on food stamps. People who have wiped out their entire savings and their retirement. So our, our frustration comes from what feels like a lack of, I don't even think I wanna use the word empathy, but it does feel as if we don't matter. And I think that, that this conversation, I hope has helped many of our members. It's a small group of our members on tonight, but I'm sure that they will share. Um, that's where, the majority of the anger comes from, I believe, is, is that it just, it's much like the COVID deaths that don't have names, so you can become numb to that being a human being. And I think that some of the challenge that our industry continues to feel is we do feel abandoned um, because live events doesn't, the words sometimes don't get said. We'll hear Save Our Stages or we'll hear restaurants and that's not all of us. And so we feel like there's moments where either your colleagues just really don't understand as you do who we are, why we generate in excess, we believe of $1.4 trillion worth of revenue, why we believe that there's about 12 million people in this industry. It's kind of the Where's the humanity is, I think, what people are so upset about. I understand uh, that point very well. And uh, it's one of the reasons I wanted to do this call, even on short notice. And um, I want to thank the folks from Connecticut Row and others who, uh, Sharon, who helped us get together. Um, I don't. I think that 
Um, Dwayne, you and um, Sharon have been monitoring this while I've been um, chatting away. Um, <laughs> so have I missed anything? I don't want to keep the Senator longer than we should, um, but I get the feeling that your generosity, Senator, is that we can keep you as long as we continue to have questions, but I don't want to take- If there are other questions, I'd be happy to address them or comment. You know, the, the, just so we're listening, I mean, the Senator does understand our industry. He does understand um, our fears. Uh, we've sat with him and, you know, he understands how the PPP doesn't work for everybody. Understands mm -hmm. about the, that we got it further into debt with the EIDL. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you are completely aware, but normally like December is a really great season for us that this December gets us through January, February, March, but we've been closed, like was said on Tuesday, we've been closed since uh, March with of no fault our, on our own without any income. And everyone is really, really scared because the unemployment's run out, everything's stopping. And now we are looking at January, February, March, April, May, without even knowing if we're gonna get reopened. So um, I, I know you understand this and we've talked about it um, in depth, but the people that are across the nation aren't privy to all the conversations that we have. So I'm gonna thank you again and let everybody know how much of a supporter you are and um, and how amazing it is that you took your time out today. Nancy? I have two, there's two questions and I've heard these a lot. Um, so it's about forgiveness. One is on the PPP. So we know that a big portion of it or, or all of it, depending on how much you got, will be forgiven. There's questions on whether or not we will be taxed on that, those dollars. And I know that it's been a discussion and I believe it's the same. Um, <clears throat> so that's the tax impl implications. And then the other question is if the EIDL loans are not forgiven and they need to be paid back with a second draw of PPP, there's confusion on how we would then retain employees and. I don't know about the IDL the same way I know about PPP. So I think that those are, are two questions I would love to see if you have a response to. The, the tax treatment we're trying to get changed. So there's no tax on the PPP. Okay. Um, and, and by the way, I realize December is a busy month uh, and that you're looking ahead. You know, um, no one has mentioned it but it is perhaps some glimmer of hope, uh, the vaccine um, seems to be working. The Moderna vaccine should be approved if it's not already, um, and then it will be distributed. And small doses at first, I'm gonna probably do it within the next few days just so people you know, I've said as soon as it's available, I'm going to roll up my sleeve because I want people to trust the safety and effectiveness of the vaccine. I am ho really hopeful that will enable us to turn the corner mm -hmm. um, and begin making plans again. Some of the challenges that we have, and, and you're well aware of this, in reopening is, is that there isn't one reopening plan. So if you're in Florida, you're open. If you're in DC, we were just shut down tight. You know, the mayor said no more indoor dining as of Wednesday. So is there, and I know that this is hard, this is what the United States is, is, is there any way that there will be one at least high level set of policies that will be required to reopen for large gatherings or are they going to leave this to each state, which is then each governor, which could then be each mayor? I think um, I can't answer that question because okay. I'm not part of the Biden transition team. I'm not going to be part of the Biden administration. The trend in the Trump administration has been let the states make these decisions. Uh, the Biden administration may or may not take that same view. For example, uh, Joe Biden has taken a very different view on mask wearing, on all of the precautions that have been recommended. Uh, I was just listening to one of the public health experts and he said, you know, if Donald Trump had told people to adopt these safety precautions nine months ago, or even six months ago, we'd be in a different world right now. 
we'd be in a different world. So yeah, we have the vaccine, but people are gonna have to continue wearing masks. And yeah, we have the vaccine, but people are gonna have to be willing to take it. Yeah. And um, so we still have a lot of challenges ahead. And I think there's some advantage to having national standards because to go to your uh, events, people are coming in from all over the country to go to a wedding. And are people going to want to go to that wedding when Uncle, Uncle Joe is coming from, you know, South Dakota where they don't wear masks, they don't want the vaccine, you know, just fine with them to be infected because hell, if enough people get infected, we'll have herd immunity, right? Well, not really my idea of the way to solve the pandemic for everybody to get sick. Sure. But, you know, there are these memos within the Health and Human Services Agency from some of the uh, crackpots there saying, uh, let's get the young people all infected. Let's get, you know, some other groups all infected. That's the way to get hurt. You. That's not going to be the case in the Biden administration. Awesome. There's, I'm going to let you go after this one last question. And there's a question, you are working on getting um, the PPP tax situation resolved. Um, for those who are not in the PPP bucket, but have been in the unemployment insurance bucket or the FPUC or any of those buckets, um, they are still being taxed. Is there any discussion the, during the COVID period of when people are receiving unemployment due to COVID that, that the taxation on those dollars would also be forgiven or? There is, uh, I'm in favor of it. I can't promise what the outcome is gonna be. But it is being discussed. Yes. That's all we can ask. And I think that the last question that we're gonna give you even though I said the last one was the last one, was um, what recommendations do you have? And we think we know the answer, but we'd like to hear it from, from you for our, I call them our frontliners, um, and this amazing group of, of advocates who before this were not advocates, they were event professionals. What is the best way for us to continue to make sure that in addition to you, your colleagues, both on the House and Senate side, hear us and know that we're there without, I guess, getting to the point that we annoy you so badly that you don't want to hear from us and you stop listening because that's not gonna be effective. Well, I'm happy to hear from you, um, but I think as you've gathered, uh, I'm already um, on your side. And I'm only one vote. I'm one vote among a hundred. And, um, you know, I just want to tell you, if I, if I may tell you another story, it's kind of a favorite story of mine. Um, Adlai Stevenson, mm -hmm. uh, which may be known to some folks on this call, was the uh, governor of Illinois. He ran for president against Dwight Eisenhower. He got Eventually, as you know, uh, history says he got soundly beaten by Ike. And he was in the middle of a speech and he was going through his, his stump speech and a woman from the crowd called out, Adlai, you are the candidate of all thinking people. And he shot back, yes, madam but I need a majority. So um, we need a majority. Mm -hmm. And I just wanna reiterate, uh, all of my colleagues are thinking people. I'm not implying otherwise. Uh, and it was a joke. It was, you know, to illustrate the point that you can have five people on your side in the United States Senate, staunchly in your, in your corner, but we need a majority. So the more you can reach out, this is a long-winded way of reiterating, the more you can reach out, Dwayne, everybody I can see, Nancy, I know you and Sean, appreciate this point, um, to the folks in other states. That's the ticket. 
Well, we, um, we continue to guide our, our folks. We have immense appreciation for you and the others who we do know are fighting for our behalf. And we do greatly, greatly appreciate that. Um, and I think that this time I really am going to let you go and okay. say thank you so very much for your time and offer one additional thing. And that is, please know that the live events industry is here. If you have questions about reopening, if you have interest in what we think is the right way to do things, please allow us to help guide you guys, because this is what we do. Logistics is what we do. It's what we know. Um, you know, we've, we've spent forever and ever being invisible because that's our job. Unfortunately, we did too good a job at being invisible and has put us in a bit of a bind right now. But um, <laughs> we would like to be there, to be your resource, to have you pick up the phone and say, Sharon, Nancy, all other people on this call, does X work? We will tell you very quickly whether or not we believe that will work or not. So please use us and reach out to us no differently than you have given us an open door to reach out to you. Very definitely, I will do that. Um, and you continue to have that open door and I hope we will get together again, you know, uh, before too long. And uh, already I'm moving on in terms of my sort of perspective to the next package, uh, but I'm continuing to fight on this one on many of the questions, tax treatment, for example, that you mentioned, flexibility um, under PPP and so forth that we discuss here. So let's, you know, definitely keep in touch and um, we'll follow up anybody who, you know, wants to get in touch with me or my office, uh, don't, don't hesitate to do it. And thanks for the time that everybody has spent on this call. Thank you. Thank you. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. I hope that the weekend is hugely successful, that the bill is passed by Monday, that you guys can at least breathe a little bit over the holidays as we all can, and that in January we will start fresh. And again, we are here to support you and we thank you. greatly appreciate it. Well, that, that means a lot. I thank you and uh, especially my friends from Connecticut yes. uh, who are on this call. Um, and uh, all of you be safe, stay well. Thank okay. you. So, so we really appreciate it. Thank you. Take Bye -bye. care.